<laughs> so in Start My Business today, uh, we put together a program, especially for people, uh, women, that have competing priorities in life, whether that's a, a career, a full-time job, uh, and or childcare. And the first step uh, is Start My Business, and it's about creating a relationship with success, especially for women. A lot of times, that's not taught in GW, that's not taught at Georgetown or other places, but we all have this. Relationship with success that is a part of our iceberg. We don't know what that is. But it's a, somehow it's when you get to a certain age, you then have certain defaults. Just like I use my right hand to write. I don't know why I use my right hand. I just do. I don't use my left hand because my left hand handwriting would be even worse than my right hand. Uh, so we all have these certain defaults in life. And even with our relationship to success and money and abundance, so, the second step, we go over Ideal Lab. Once again, we talk about the vision. Remember what I mentioned, for me, the most important thing when I was disabled was having that vision that I would walk again and being so determined that that was going to happen. There was no other if, ands, or buts otherwise. That was just it. It was happening, even if it took one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. It was on the docket. The next thing we talk about is the bankable business plan. Um, I uh, have seen, obviously, thousands of business plans, and I create a system called the Bankable Business Plan. Why is that? Because we want to get funding. Who wants to just write a business plan that looks great, uh, file it into your own little folder here and never see it again? The next thing that we do is market research. Uh, step four, five, and six, um, seven and eight is more based off of marketing. We also talk about products and services and figure out how do you get to your number one. Sure, a lot of people have a, a ton of great ideas, but you want to make the most money as soon as you possibly can. And a lot of times we find that our clients even start to get clients while they're in the middle of classes, which is great because they get their ROI right away. Uh, the next thing we talk about is marketing and selling. And then in step seven and eight, social media and websites which for some people is okay, and depending on our demographic, could be a little bit more terrifying other ways. And a lot of times you hear from different experts, not just from me. And then we have our board of advisors about incorporating and saving money. And then profit, how do you calculate profit? Operations, how do you create uh, something that you can scale and scope so it's not just you. You can build it so it becomes something larger than you. And then of course, the last step is funding. Uh, now, Erica invited me here because I'm a Kiva trustee, and this happens to be one of our options. Uh, another option, of course, that a lot of people choose is family and friends. Somebody that I know used to be one of our clients, uh, used to be a social worker, and worked at a nonprofit, and just had a different mentality coming in, and then eventually she ended up getting millions of dollars in funding. Why? Because her parents were millionaires. <laughs> but she went through the program, I know, right? to be born with such luck. But she went through the program to justify what she was learning and then put together a bankable business plan. So when she asked them on Thanksgiving, which of course we rehearsed before the big ask, she got her money. Why is that? Because she had all of these different steps taken care of and they could see that she was doing something concerted and it wasn't just a napkin saying, hey, can I have a million dollars? <laughs> so, but in most cases we're looking for people to fund perhaps at the $2,500 level, which gets them a website, uh, as well as the $5,000 level, and even perhaps in the $10,000 level, which gets them, of course, additional help too. And I mentioned a little bit about what we do in the Start My Business Today program, and now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what it takes to become a Kiva trustee. Uh, Johnny Price, the CEO, is British goth, and came to Philadelphia, and he wanted to make a, a Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia, into a Kiva city. Washington, D.C., I believe, is also a Kiva city, but unfortunately it doesn't have the same capacity that we did in Philadelphia, where we had, a, through the city of Philadelphia, the, the Department of Commerce, we had somebody who was on staff who would actually help out a lot of our fundies. And one of the most interesting things is that a lot of times people would go back and forth on what's their story. How do they create a very compelling story to get funded on Kiva? 
as well as um, how do they even reach out to all of their people. So one of the great things that the city of Philadelphia did is they put together a whole bunch of different templates and information so then we could give it to everybody else. So I've been really fortunate about that. So in order to become a, to get funded to Kiva Zip, you normally have to be over the age of 18, which I believe that's everybody in this room, Danielle included. Okay, well done. Uh, you normally have to have an address in the United States. Once again, that's everybody else. All right. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you normally have to have a PayPal account. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> so, so that means all of you can get funded by Kiva Zip. Congratulations. And then I imagine a lot of you have some crazy idea that you wanna work on. Okay, so that makes it even easier and you have a picture. Okay, all right, perfect. So uh, as a trustee, for me, a lot of it's about contact. So I get to know you through this program. We get to put together a document that you can hand to any funder and be super proud of, although you'll hate me during the process. Usually most people love me step one through three because that's more of the thinking and the believing part uh, as what we do. Because uh, our motto for Women's Biz Co-op is think, believe, do. And you can uh, check us out on the web at www www.womensbizcoop.com and we have a free membership. We can get templates, I know Eric is a member, and a whole bunch of cool things, how-to guides, you name it. And we give you all of that for free because we want to be able to support you and help you along the way. So check out uh, Women's Biz Co-op. I know all of you are reaching for your phones right now. I'm like, what did you just say? <laughs> and uh, through this process, we help you understand and clarify what your goals are and not just have some crazy idea that you wanna do right away, maybe even create different phases of the crazy idea so it fits into your lifestyle of who you are in this moment of time, because that's key. Because a lot of people, their dreams are so big and they're so huge. I remember I was talking to this one woman who wanted to start a television production studio and she wanted to uh, also write children's books and she wanted to do all this stuff. And I said, I don't know, that's not possible. Maybe it is but it's gonna be really difficult to do in three months. So let's just figure out exactly what you wanna do and work on that goal and, and on phases, and then maybe next year you can work on something else. And then once I told her the possibility of, of hopefully getting her idea up and launched, she almost collapsed because she didn't think it could be a dream come true. And why was that? That was her iceberg. That was her fails coming into play. And unfortunately, she didn't hire me in order to get her through them. But where <laughs> one man wanted to start a bank and he had spent a half million dollars and he was endorsed by all, all these celebrities as well as um, he wanted to make it a bank based on faith and create this really cool system. And I said, all right, well, it's gonna cost a certain amount of money. At the time, it was only less than $500 to join our program to get $2,500 in funding. And he said, but you don't guarantee funding. I said, no, I don't guarantee funding. But if you have a PayPal account, a US address, and a picture, uh, as well as an email address, majority, 100% of our people have gotten funded that have successfully completed our program. Now, 80% of the people have completed our program. Why is that? It's because their dreams were so big that they eventually couldn't make it through it. And they did it, they normally did it towards the end, and then just kind of Houdini and vanished, even though I tried to reach out to them with like phone calls and emails. Here, she is also a Cuban Zip Barber. Yeah. So she's going to express, thanks so much, Judah. Um, she is going to express to us a little bit about her company, herself, and Cuba. Hi, everyone. My name is Sandy Diamond, also known as Shameless Chef. And um, let me, I hope you can read this. Shameless Chef DC. Um, so, uh, thank you so much for having me here tonight. Um, it's really an honor to be here. Um, I haven't really done too much of this type of speaking and um, so it's really exciting to be invited and to be a part of this. Um, so I 
started Shameless Chef uh, a little bit less than a year ago. Um, I incorporated in May. And um, prior to that, I um, was working as a social worker. Um, my background is um, in domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, I worked in that capacity for over 10 years. And, um, you know, I last winter was actually sick and I had a bunch of time uh, on my hands. And so I pulled out some old family recipes and I started baking. Um, and, you know, part of, part of my story is I was always told that I couldn't bake, um, that I was an okay chef, and that, um, you know, other people in my family were bakers or, you know, they were the dessert people. It was never me. And so um, I started playing with this recipe for cake balls. And um, I found that the more that I made them and the more that I was doing this, this whole like rolling and um, you know, it's very grounding, very therapeutic, and it was a great way to pass the time. And then I would start sharing it with people and um, people loved it. And for me, it was such a joy to share something with someone and for them to enjoy it was a big deal because working as a social worker, especially in the domestic violence capacity, people don't always want to see you, you know? It's like, oh God, there she is again, I've got to do this. And, you know, so to go from that, you know, to have that transition was really, um, it was really neat. And, um, you know, the healing process from the surgery took a long time. And, um, and so I had a lot of time on my hands. And I mean, I had, I had a great job at a great agency here in DC. Um, but something was definitely missing. And so I started doing some research and um, I happened to find out that it's not too tricky to navigate some of the systems to become a business owner. And so um, you know, I started doing some research and I found um, that you, know, you can incorporate pretty easily through, um, I use LegalZoom, so I was able to set up my LLC and within a month, um, I was, uh, I had applied for a membership with Union Kitchen, which is a food incubator here in DC, which allows for foodpreneurs like myself to, to start a business without the risks of having to have, you know, brick and mortar or having your own space. I mean, finance and capital is really hard to come by, um, especially when you don't have tons of experience in a commercial kitchen. And so um, I met with the folks at Union Kitchen and um, I went through my whole, uh, they call it like the fish tank <laughs> interview and I brought my samples and I, um, you know, I, I went through the whole process and I ended up getting accepted. And it was, it was a pretty amazing experience um, because for once I was like, wow, I'm good enough. I'm good enough to be accepted into this group of people that I really, find um, to be pretty amazing. They're doing great things for the community and allowing for folks like myself to really like break out of our mold and you know try something new that we couldn't necessarily do before. And um, so I started there and I started out as a nights and weekends member. Um, so uh, you know quickly my business started growing almost a year and yeah this is what I do. I own a business. I'm a female small owner, like small business owner here in Washington, D.C. When I moved to D.C. two and a half years ago, I was finishing grad school. Um, I had this vision of working on policy here, like so many other folks, right? Um, <laughs> working on policy for domestic violence and sexual assault prevention. And, um, you know, I was just getting so burnt out and just so beat down walking up on the hill and like going to those different meetings and leaving and just going, oh my God, is this what I'm, this is what I'm destined to do? This is crazy. Why, why would I sign up for this? And I thought, oh, maybe I'll just go packing back to LA where I'm from um, and I could get a good job there. And that's not what I want to do. So everything, you know, just kind of worked out and, um, you know, like we were talking about earlier, like fear is such a big thing, right? Like. My experience is when it comes to fear, I'm just gonna either like paralyze, just stay in it and not react or run. <laughs> I'm not a very good runner. <laughs> Running is always like that, that second instinct to get very far because um, it's always right there. So 
um, being able to work through a lot of those fears and um, get on the other side of it has been pretty extraordinary. Um, to go from, you know, in the beginning, I, I guess, you know, part of this journey is learning about self-worth. You know, we were talking about with like self-actualization and like working through all of these things, like it's kind of ironic this is up here, but um, you know, like when I started my business, safety was a big issue. Like I, I had been going through some other things where I wasn't feeling safe and secure. And as I felt, you know, more secure in my surroundings and in my life, like I was able to work my way up the scale. And, um, you know, having formed the Shameless Chef, like, it's not because we're shameless. Like, people are like, oh, what does Shameless Chef stand for? It's like, it's not because we're shameless. It's because it's part of my, my journey, part of our journey as, as women, as men, as individuals in our world, you know, trying to make it through life without having to feel so ashamed for everything that we do or don't do, mm. you know? So for me, in my experience, you know, I walked around with so much guilt. I walked around with so much shame. And part of my response to those things was, you know, just to get further into that shame and hide in the corner and just kind of keep trying to function. And today it's facing those things and getting onto the other side of it instead of like just being paralyzed by it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I came up with the idea for these things called train bites, which are, um, you know, they're a nice little treat that tastes like uh, food to know. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, thank you. They're delicious. <laughs> so, you know, people eat treats, right? They have cake, you know, cake balls or cake pops and cupcakes and cakes and ice cream and all this. And so for me to come up with another cake ball was like, what are you going to do with another dessert? And so I really had to find a way to connect everything together. And so, um, you know, the more I was making these cake bites, the more I was sharing them, the more it was becoming, like this dream was becoming a reality. This dream of being able to be on my own, um, to provide opportunities for others in our community was really starting to shape, take shape. And so, um, played around with a bunch of different names and dream bites were born. Um, and dream bites are our spin on the cake ball. And like I was saying earlier, it's all very therapeutic, it's all very grounding. And so now, as the business has grown um, and my roots are getting stronger, I've been able to reach out to women in the community that are looking for opportunities. And in fact, a couple of my employees uh, live in a transitional housing program here in DC. And um, it's been just, it's, it's been incredible to be able to um, combine my, my passion and my profession. And, and really, you know, the thing that drives me the most is being of service to others. Like I, I'm one of those people that like without community, we are lost. And when I moved to DC, I didn't have much community. So I needed to start figuring out a way to find one and to build one. And, um, you know, that's, that's what The Shameless Chef is really about. It's building community um, and opportunities for folks that are struggling with self-sufficiency. And I mean, uh, these women in particular that are working for me, I, I could have ended up in that same place had I been like two steps different. You never know. So, um, you know, I just really believe that it's important not to take for granted the opportunities that we're given. And, um, you know, there's really no, no coincidences. I feel like um, having the experience of finding Mimi Kitchen and finding the Key Visit um, funding and finding all of these things along the way and like them just falling into place has been pretty magical and pretty, pretty incredible and, and instrumental to me being able to stand here today in front of all of you um, and share my story with you guys because it's it's pretty amazing. So. Yeah. Lessons whether you're president. <laughs> uh, it fits perfectly with women's empowerment and entrepreneurship. I think your story. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Sandy? Do you have any specific um, like suggestions or things that you were surprised or learned about when you were doing the key visit process that might be helpful for other borrowers? Sure. Um, Try and get out of your own way. <laughs> this is an amazing opportunity that's really risk-free. So, um, you know, 
if you have an idea and you feel compelled to take it the next step, try it. One of one of the things for me is like, I often will think about like, um, if I try something or if I don't try something, am I going to regret it in the future if I didn't do it? <coughs> so um, more often than not, I'll take that that risk in trying and leave it up to you know the community to see if it's something that's going to stick. But um, you know, if you fear is such a natural thing, um, so to try and move past it and know that it's normal, it's totally normal to feel the way that you're feeling. Like when you're getting ready to click that button, it's like, oh, I don't know if that's really gonna work. And it's like, well, try, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I would say try and shut the fear off. Sandy also donated one of her um, door prizes from Dream Invites. So mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what that is? So I um, donated two different gift certificates. Um, they are for um, some of our dream bites. One of them is for um, one of our love bites, love buckets. It's a 13 piece um, dream bite. And then the other one is a, I think I did, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's a smaller size bucket. So it's like six piece and you can um, hop online and check out the, the ordering through the website and um, you can place an order through there or you can reach out to me directly and we can get you uh, your prize. Thank you so much. Thank you. Also, we received another donation from Whisk, the one inch sweet pie and one nine inch savory pie. So my question for you are the winner of the yeah. Whisk Pie. Thank you so fast here, which is America's Enterprise and Thanks so much to our intern, Daniela, who has...